morning, everyone. Uh, welcome again uh, to day two of the Fusion Financial uh, Trading Session. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, you know, thank you, everyone, uh, those who have confirmed their enrollments. And uh, uh, we have extended this uh, session for today as well, uh, so that uh, if anyone of you interested uh, to have a look at the demo, ongoing demo, and then uh, take a decision whether to get enrolled, you do have the option uh, for today as well. And uh, uh, you can confirm your enrollments, but from tomorrow, we are uh, definitely going to have a closed session uh, to uh, enter the uh, session. Uh, so therefore, uh, you may uh, confirm your enrollments today. And there is an early word offer, as I had mentioned yesterday. So that would be applicable for today as well. And... Uh, uh yeah uh so uh the enrolled part is for uh, whatsapp uh, group and uh, the the website uh the triotech website for your logins and uh, credentials uh those details will be created and shared for uh, with you soon okay all right <clears throat> so proceeding uh with the uh demo session today so yesterday we had talked about an overview of the Oracle uh, Cloud Financials application. Uh, basically, uh, you know, as an introduction, uh, what all, uh, what is the understanding around, uh, uh, you know, Oracle Fusion applications, and uh, what are the different kinds of applications that are included uh, within the framework of Oracle uh, Cloud, uh, you know, modules. Uh, similarly. Uh, you know what are the different modules that are there within uh, the accounts uh the oracle cloud financials and what are the different course offerings and uh, you know things around it what are the different work profiles okay uh those are the things that we understood as an overview uh around the uh yeah, demo session yesterday now today onwards we are going to deep dive into the oracle applications uh, training so with that, the first topic that the very first topic that uh, we would understand uh, is uh, you know something some some navigational components, okay, uh, around the fusion applications and uh, how we uh, you know uh, what are the things that you can see on the pages and you know how you can uh, become familiar with it. That is what uh, we are going to go through. And the very next topic is security administration. Though the agenda it has been listed in this order. But I, I will start with security administration as the very next point uh, within the, uh, you know, the demo for today. So first thing is understanding the Oracle user interface. UI stands for user interface. Okay, basically the pages that we see, okay, that is called as user interface. Okay, Oracle landing page icons and the navigation. So the, the page that you log in, Okay, and the post login, uh, you know, the different kinds of icons that you see, the layout that you see. Okay, so those are the things that we will have a understanding around first, and then we will move on with the other financial offerings. So basically, uh, you know, what all uh, different, uh, uh, you know, uh, setup related aspects uh, or setup related navigation uh, has, and you know, how, you, how do you do look about it and, uh, you know, how do you gain an understanding around those aspects is something that we will see first. All right. So let me, uh, let me start with the, you know, login page. So yesterday we had a look at the login page as well, right? How, uh, you know, you will get, the login, uh, you know, details and then how you can uh, log on to the particular, uh, you know, website or basically the Oracle URL. Okay. Just one second. All right. So here we have uh, the login that we had done yesterday, which is one of the demo instances that Oracle provides. Okay, so this is one of the other demo instance uh, which we are going to use to, uh, you know, uh, see the different uh, aspects of the different uh, topics uh, within the Oracle uh, applications training. Okay, and uh, these demo instances even will be shared with you as well. 
once uh, you know the enrollments are complete and uh, we start the regular sessions that is when you will start receiving uh, these demo instances uh, and you may uh, and also you will get the recordings and uh, you can simultaneously uh, on a day to day basis you can practice out uh, the topics that we are covering just one moment So I'm entering the, you know, uh, user ID. So like this, a user ID will be available and the required passwords also will be provided. Okay. So once you uh, have put the password, that is when uh, you would be logged into the application okay so now this page is uh, one of the pages for uh, you know sort of we call it as the landing page and uh, which is basically kind of a dashboard uh, page where the different kinds of dashboard can be uh, set up uh, based on the business analytics uh, of the uh, you know business analytic uh, dashboard that has been developed okay but uh, once you have logged in and you do have some of these options that you see on the top okay now, in order to go to the navigate to the applications or the workspaces, uh, you know, you may have to go to the home page first. Okay. Uh, so, which is the icon for home page? The one that you see here, which, which is in the shape of a home. Okay. Click on that. So, it will take you to the home page uh, of the application. So, application is what this particular, uh, uh, you know, URL that you see. Okay. Which is uh, something till dot com. Okay, this these kind of URLs will be provided to uh, whomsoever purchases the licenses for the Oracle applications, the SaaS applications, as we talked about yesterday. Okay, they will be given uh, URLs like these. Okay, so we call these as instances or we call them as environment. Okay, so these kind of environments will be provided to them, uh, which has access to the SaaS applications. And, uh, you know, with the required uh, credentials, that is the user ID and password. And once they log in, they can start using the, uh, you know, application. Now, again, uh, start using the application in the sense, depending upon the different kinds of configurations and, uh, you know, data accesses that are there, they will be able to use it. Right now, we are uh, entered into this application. And, uh, you know, we are understanding what are the different navigational components, okay? around this application. So home page we have seen when you click on home page, you will land up to this particular page, which will show you all the different kind of uh, uh, workspaces and the springboards, okay, uh, that are available uh, as per the access that this particular user has. Okay, so this particular user, basically this is the user HCM uh, set, okay, is the user name that has been created in the real life uh, business terms, it will be what? It will be the employees' uh, names that will be created as user IDs, okay? And that is what uh, will be given, and uh, that their user IDs will be, uh, you know, showing over here on the, uh, you know, uh, homepage once they log in, okay? So each each person, each employee of the organization that is supposed to work on the ERP, they will be. Uh, created as a user okay with their respective email ids or you know some other uh, user ids they will be given the access okay now the home page is what we have talked about okay yeah in the home page there are many uh, uh, sections okay this is called as the news feed layout the layout that you see okay on this page the the way it, it is showing the display that is called as a news feed layout okay where you can see all the different applications that this particular user has access to okay will be displayed over here okay so being an employee or being uh, you know having access to some of the employee related uh, roles or employee related accesses they will be able to see me section where they can you know uh, look for their personal information uh, you know connections then payment related uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, their salary pay related, uh, you know, uh, work area. Similarly, time and absence where they can manage their, uh, you know, time sheets and, uh, you know, record their absences, then career and performance. Okay. So these are all actually HCM components. Okay. Human capital related component, uh, 
you know, which an employee typically has to have access to in a particular organization. This I'm just explaining for your understanding. Okay, then there is procurement. So let's suppose uh, this particular user is part of procurement. Then therefore he will uh, he or she will have access to the procurement app. Once they have the access, uh, they will get the respective work areas. We call these as work areas or work benches. Okay, so uh, you know the purchase requisition work area, receipt related work area. Okay, so these are again depending upon the access that he or she has. Okay, so all these that you see over here. These are different, uh, you know, workspaces that they will have access to. Okay, depending upon the different accesses uh, that has been provided to them. Like you can see receivables. Okay, so receivable access is there for this particular receivable workspace access is there for this particular user. Uh, because why? Because this particular user might be uh, supposed to be working on the accounts receivable within the organization. So that's where the access has been provided and ultimately uh, on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, newsfeed layout, you will be able to see all the different workspaces. So if you scroll to the right, the same way you will see all the different workspaces. Okay. So this is a super user. HCM.sep is a super user, which has access to all the uh, different kinds of modules. And therefore, you can see all the different areas or, uh, you know, work areas or workspaces available under his or uh, under this particular login, HCM.September login. Okay, but in real business world, uh, the users who are supposed to work on different areas of business, only those areas or workspaces will be uh, given access to them. Okay, let's like say for example, if an accounts payable, uh, if an employee is an accounts payable accountant, then they will get only the payable related, uh, you know, workspace and uh, you know some some activities from an employee perspective uh, whatever accesses they would need to you know carry out their employee related activities that will be available to them they won't be getting any other access okay similarly a general accountant okay who is supposed to work in the general accounting department will get access to the general accounting uh, workspace okay they will he or she will not get uh, any other accesses okay again def definitely employee related activities if they have to perform the respective employee related accesses will be there as part of the hcm uh you know uh hcm related uh you know task like you know if they have to book their time sheet or you know if it is oracle itself that they are using for time book sheet time uh, for uh you know booking of time sheet or you know recording of their absences leaves okay or things like that they want to see their salary slips okay so those kind of things are integral to the employee's personal activities so for that the different workspaces will be available if it is there again oracle itself erp itself that they are using for hcm also okay so that's workspaces is what we had seen in the very beginning okay and but other than that all the functional areas okay depending upon the functional uh, you know responsibilities that they are carrying out within the business the respective roles will be or accesses will be provided which they can see here in this particular uh, you know news feed layout okay so all you can see here there are different kinds of accesses okay now coming to the uh, scroll down when you scroll down you will see another thing which is called as things to finish okay so under this particularly uh, they will find uh, all the uh, you know, pending uh, approvals and things like that that are assigned, okay, or uh, some things that you have created or initiated. So let's say, for example, uh, invoice was submitted, accounts payable invoice was uh, entered by you and submitted for approval, okay. So that is where you will find uh, those uh, one the ones that you have initiated, okay, under created by me, okay. So I'll go back under this particular list and when you click on it it will take you further to the notifications uh you know work list okay so the one that we saw just now i clicked on it it will take me to the Thanks. it will take me to the notifications work list where i'll be able to further see all those uh you know notification that has been initiated from my side probably for approval or, you know, things like that. So uh, any documents that I have initiated for approval will be showing under this particular list, okay, created by me, okay? Th this is called as the notification work list, okay? Uh, the same way, 
I'll go back. Uh, and here you will see assigned to me. Assigned to me means the ones that are assigned to you, whether some of them might be for approval, okay, some of them might be for, uh, you know, for your information uh, notifications. So all in all, notification related aspects, you will be able to find over here and even you will be able to take an action. So you can see approved. So approved means basically this is a notification coming to you, uh, probably because you might have uh, uh, created some activity and sent it for approvals. Once that was approved, your you are getting a notification saying that it is approved. Okay, similarly, some FYI, that is for your information notifications also will come up. Okay, similarly, approval, if there is any, if, if you, probably you are in the approval chain of hierarchy for let's say, accounts payable invoice uh, uh, approvals okay then in that case uh, if some 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 junior person from the accounts payable department has uh, you know booked an invoice and initiated the approval then it will come to you okay uh, or let's say assume that this is the user id to be you okay so uh, it will come to you and you will be able to find uh, the uh, respective numbers over here and when you click on it it will take you further to the uh, notifications area and it will show you assigned to me so you can see here different uh, notifications that have been assigned to you some of them are fyi some of them are uh, you know requiring your action okay so things like that okay so this is the uh, you know quick uh, access uh, section for the notifications the other way also you have another option also for navigating to the no notifications page Okay, what is that uh, navigation? So here on the top, do you see something called something like a bell icon? Okay, so this bell icon is again the same notifications related uh, icon, okay, where you can access the notification page. Okay, so click on it and you will see again the same page notifications. And here you will be able to see all the different for your information or, uh, uh, you know, notifications that require your action. Okay, all those will be coming up okay you can further expand this page by clicking on show all and it is going to take you to the same notification page that we saw earlier assigned to me is the bucket that will show all the notifications assigned to you created by me uh, is the bucket which will show all the notifications that has been initiated from your side okay and all will show uh, all the notifications including both these buckets Okay, so this is what basically the notifications, uh, you know, second uh, uh, se uh, second way uh, you can uh, access the notifications. Okay, now if you further scroll down, you will see news and announcement. Okay, so basically this section is for the, uh, you know, any kind of uh, announcements and news that the uh, organization would like to publish. Okay organization would like to publish uh, uh, so that is something that will be displayed over here okay so that there would be administrators who would be managing that particular uh, uh, those particular sections okay once they publish something okay within the organization to be informed to all uh, that would be something coming up over here okay depends upon these functionalities whether that is whether it is used uh, by uh, uh, you know the organization or Okay, then there is a section for analytics. Okay, so analytics, uh, there are certain kinds of uh, infolets as we call it, or you can say statistical, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of dashboards, analytical dashboards, which basically will uh, show you uh, some key information with respect to the business processes. Okay, now again, these infotech, uh, you know, infolets, will get displayed uh, depending upon the access that you have. Okay, just one second. All right, so let me go here. So once I refresh, refreshed it, do you see HCM infolets? Okay, so HCM related access here, uh, you know, this particular user has, and that is where the seeded infolets, okay, the seeded, uh, uh, you know, uh, infolets are nothing but uh, kind of uh, this, these tile, sections uh, which gives some kind of information or analytical information the same way it will be available for other uh, work areas also accounts payable uh, related work areas 
accounts receivable related work areas, general ledger related work areas. For all of them, the respective Oracle has created certain standard infolets. And uh, depending upon the access, those will be displayed over here. Okay, so in the infolet, certain key uh, information, okay, gets highlighted, okay, which can help uh, the business take uh, informed uh, decisions or take informations, okay, and that is where these kind of, uh, you know, uh, section has been provided within the layout, okay, so you can see different kinds of charts, okay, or, uh, you know, uh, diagrams or, uh, you know, certain statistics. These are all info tiles. Okay. The same way it will be available for other financial modules also. Not only financial modules, depending upon all the accesses that you have, like supply chain access, then supply chain related info infolets will be available. To you. Okay. If it is uh, financial applications, then financial application related infolets will be available. So this is all in all, which basically, uh, you know, displays all these uh, different kinds of areas uh, and, you know, uh, sections, which you can uh, scroll through and get a uh, look and feel of. Okay. Now, apart from this, at, at the, you know, page level, uh, top level, apart from this, uh, uh, you know, home page and the notifications uh, section, there are other few sections as well. That is this particular star. Okay, and then there is a flag. Okay, so these are again, uh, you know, some activities that you can perform here. So what is star? Basically, star is nothing but the favorites and recent items. Okay, so any page that you want to frequently visit, you can mark them as, uh, you know, favorite uh, page, and uh, you don't have to navigate to all the steps to navigate to that particular page every time. So let's say, for example, I want to go to the invoice uh you know billing area okay so supplier invoice or ap invoice accounts payable invoice billing area i want to navigate and that comes within my daily task okay so if i want to do that in a normal way then first of all i will have to find uh, the accounts payable uh, workspace from here okay and then go click on that and then further click on uh, the different sections and move, move around okay let's say for example uh, accounts payable access is not available for this particular user so assume it, let's say general accounting. Okay, so general accounting, this is the journals page that comes under my activity uh, to perform my activity daily. Okay, so first I click on general accounting, then I go to journals. Okay. Uh, then I, let me select this. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, some words uh, like what the journal page looks like, but we will talk about all of these in detail once we start with each of the Module wise training. Okay. But yeah, for time being, how to use the favorites tab is what my, uh, you know, point is. Now, let's say uh, they have to go every day uh, to check uh, certain journals. Okay. So that is where manage journals as a page is something available within the task. Okay. If I do not have set it as a favorite, then what will happen? I will have to do this, all this navigation. Right. First, I went to general accounting workspace, then I went to journals. Then from journals, I clicked on this task list and then went to manage journals. Okay, like that, I will have to navigate to come to, to come down to this page. So there are uh, three or four steps that I had to perform. Instead, if I want to save my time significantly on such kind of activities, I can mark those pages as favorites. So let's say, for example, I can mark this page as a favorite. Okay, so now I'm on this page. I will click on this, uh, uh, you know, uh, star icon. Okay, go to favorites. Okay, then I will say add to favorites. Okay, and the name is same as the page name, manage journals and save and close. Okay, so now let me exit out of this page and go back to the home page. Okay, so I'm back to the home page. Okay. Now, if I go to the uh, this particular icon, which is the favorites and reset icon, okay, under favorites, do you see manage journals? So that is how the manage journal page has been saved under favorites, okay? And I click, I can directly click on it, and I can avoid all the three or four steps I perform. I will directly land on this particular page.
Okay. So that is the use of favorite stamp. Okay. So basically mark uh, the frequently visited uh, pages as favorite items so that you can save time on those clicks. Okay. And uh, directly jump onto the respective page. Okay. Similarly, you can create even multiple folders. Okay. Folder wise folder also you can uh, create and, uh, you know, keep, uh, you know, the respective, uh, manage the respective favorite pages. Then recent items under the same, uh, you know, icon, you will find recent items also. All the recent pages that you have went on, okay, or you have navigated to, okay, those uh, recent items will also be displayed over here, okay. So that is the use of this particular icon that is favorites and recent items. Then we have something called as the work list, okay, so, sorry, watch list, okay. So you might be familiar with this particular terminology, watch list. Okay, so basically, uh, you know, let's say if you have, if you are using a app for uh, stock market, right, you will see uh, there is a watch list section where uh, you have an option to add the all the stocks which you want to keep an eye on, right, which you want to uh, keep on seeing or, uh, you know, you want to take a look at it, uh, uh, you know, how it is performing on a frequent basis. So that is what a, the, a similar kind of concept is in the uh, Oracle ERP also. So in Oracle ERP, you uh, have to keep an, let's say, uh, you want to keep a Hello? quick eye on, uh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt, yes? but uh, I'm losing your voice. Is it only me or uh, I don't know where the fault is? So it's for me to okay. Okay, I think I have some internet issues at my end. Where did you guys lose me? Uh at what point is, did you lose it, me? It is for a short duration, but it is just blabbering it out. Uh multiple okay. times that this happened, but mm -hmm. it's very for a uh, one to two seconds. But ah, okay. Are... okay, so probably the internet issue is there. Let's see if uh Issue persists, then I will uh, restart and then re rejoin. Okay. <laughs> fine. Right now, let's continue. Am I audible now? Is it fine? Uh, yes, yes, you're <clears throat> Okay. All right. Let's continue. So here, uh, the watch list is there. So this particular uh, task is, or this particular icon is watch list, where, uh, you know, depending upon the different... Uh, work areas that you have, first of all, different depending upon the different application access that you have and the different uh, tasks that you carry out within the respective application, the watch list is something that will be available to you here. So let's say, for example, uh, like you can see with respect to journals, okay, certain key actionable uh, areas of uh, journals are created as a watch list. Okay, this is not something that we are creating. This is something which is Oracle standard, different identifying, you know, certain areas where you have to keep a close look on. Okay. Now this, this will come up depending upon the accesses that you have, the access to the applications and the kind of work that you are doing. Okay. With respect to the different application accordingly, this section will come up. Now this journal related uh, watch lists are coming up. Why? Because you, uh, this particular user that is XCM.Zep has access to the general accounting uh, application. Okay. That's why this section of, uh, work list, uh, watch list is coming up. Okay. Now, again, as I mentioned, watch list is what certain, uh, you know, uh, key actionable, uh, you know, areas, uh, are something that will be listed under the watch list, depending upon the application accesses that you have and depending upon the work that you do within the respective, uh, you know, login. Okay. So import errors. So in case of journals, uh, many a times we have journals coming in through different sources. Okay, whether it, it can be through external uh, ERP or external uh, software from where the journals are uh, being imported. Okay, or it can be journals that are getting imported from other modules within Oracle. Okay, like uh, the payable module or receivable module or, uh, you know, expense module or, uh, you know, supply chain related procurement module or inventory module from all these places the journals will get imported, okay? Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, general accounting is what? General accounting or general ledger is the ultimate, uh, uh, you know, application where all the accounting flows down to, right? 
Now, in that case, if there are some errors, okay, and uh, this particular watch list helps you uh, see what are the number of errors, and then once you click on it, okay, further, it will drill down to those particular respective areas, and uh, you will be able to see all the different, uh, you know, errors and to take actions, timely actions on those particular uh, areas. Okay, so that is what the use of a watch list is. You can keep an eye on different key activities or key actionable items, okay, and take necessary action on a timely basis, uh, you know, based on the watch list. Okay, so similar kind of uh, watch lists are available for all the modules and it will be, it will appear under here, depending upon the access that you have to, or depending upon the responsibility that you need to carry out, the access of the application will be available and in turn, the respective watch list uh, that are embedded for that particular application will be available here. Just like in case of receivables, you can see. Receivable as a module is being given access to this particular user. Therefore, the receivable related workspace, uh, sorry, watch lists are coming up. Receipts pending creation. Okay, those receipts that are pending creation, receipts and credit memos. Under that, unapplied receipts. So what is the number of unapplied receipts? Uh, as of today, uh, for for you or for the respective uh, organization that you belong, okay. So that is what is is displayed over here, and then you can simply click on it and uh, go go there and take the necessary action. So you can see here, these are the unapplied receipts, okay. So this is how basically the respective uh, you know uh, watch list navigation would work, okay. Back to the home page. Uh, we saw this particular item, right? The notifications item, we already saw it. Okay, then uh, let's talk about this particular settings and actions, the profile kind of icon that you see over here, settings and actions. Under these, there are many things. Okay, but uh, we'll quickly just uh, talk about a uh, couple of things that uh, you need to be aware of. So like uh, about this application, which we already saw from where you can uh, uh, version the, uh, and release uh, details, okay? Then similarly, uh, you know, there is a section for, uh, 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 you know, personalization, okay? Personalization in the sense uh, you want to set the date and time or, you know, you want to, uh, you know, uh, change it, okay? So those things are available over here. There are many more things available, but we'll uh, talk about general things, okay? So under preferences, you have the regional, uh, you know, general preferences. What is the regional preference that you want? So basically the time zone changes, so the number format change, okay, date format change, territory change. These are the things that you can take a look at. What is the, uh, you know, details or even uh, change it accordingly uh, as per the need, uh, as per the, as per your requirement. Okay. Then language, okay, related change. Okay. So this is again the default language, the current session and display name language, uh, you know, that is uh, coming up as a, default uh, for this particular in instance or for, for this particular environment, okay? We don't need to change it because if we change it, then it will be, uh, you know, inaccessible for all the others, okay? So that's where, uh, you know, I'm just showing you for your understanding that these are the different places where different kinds of settings are in place, okay? Then uh, similarly, accessibility settings, okay? Uh, you know, what is the default? Is it default mode, color contrast? Okay, those things are available in here. Okay, then comes the password. So if you want to request, uh, you know, your uh, password reset. Okay, so that is where under the password section, you can, uh, you know, go and request the password reset. Then uh, watch list from here also, you have the option to go to watch list and add or uh, remove certain watch list. Okay, so the ones that you were seeing on this watch list, right? Uh, here are the ones which are uh, by default enabled, okay, depending upon the uh, different uh, application accesses that you will be provided. But let's say not all of them, you need it under watch list, okay, and you want to uh, disable uh, certain of the certain uh, watch list. So let's say, for example, I don't want uh, the watch list for uh, contracts risk expiring on hold, okay. So here in the watch list, you will see uh, contract related at risk expiring on hold. I don't want this particular section. Okay. So I can choose to disable it. So these are the personal preferences that you can enable or disable. Okay. For the watch list apart. And now if you go to the watch list, 
you will not find the contacts. Okay, so this is the general preferences. How do you want to set your preferences? Okay. So this is uh, something uh, from a general perspective, preference perspective that we have talked about. Then coming back to this uh, profile icon again. Okay, you will find uh, uh, one more aspect setup and maintenance because now onwards setup and maintenance is just a second. Uh, am I audible now? Am I audible? Yeah, it's uh, clear now. Okay, so setup and maintenance is is the you know navigation that you will quite frequently visit now because we would be talking about the different configurational aspects going forward, right? So this is something that you will be quite frequently visiting and uh, you know looking at the different uh, setup related aspects. So therefore, it's important that you understand this navigational component. Okay, setup and maintenance. Again, the setup and maintenance is come uh, access is there. Why? Because this particular users user has the respective access to do the setups, and that's why this access is available under his uh, settings and actions. Okay. Now, if a particular if if it is a general user that is a a common business user who is not part of the admin team or IT team, okay, they will not have this access. For them, setup and maintenance as an option will not be available. So more or less everything on this particular application or uh, in the environment is controlled based on the accesses. And that's why security administration is a important concept for you to understand. And that's the reason once we have gone through the navigational aspects, we will talk about security administration and we will see how the security administrations can configurations can be done and uh, you know the respective uh, uh, activities can be managed. Okay, but yeah, setup and maintenance is something that you will quite frequently now visit, uh, uh, you know, in order to do the different kinds of setups related to the applications. So let me click on that. And show you how the page looks like and, you know, what are the different aspects on it. All right, so once you are down into this particular uh, page, this is where you will see uh, different uh, kinds of setups and its different, uh, you know, areas or offerings as we call it. Okay. So here you see, this is the offerings where you will see all the offerings that are enabled for this particular instance. Offerings are nothing but the different uh, areas of, uh, you know, the application or different applicational application uh, family. Okay. That you enable. Okay. That is to be enabled. Okay. Only then it will be available under the uh, different setup and maintenance. Okay, so if let's say for example, if it is a fresh instance, okay, a very completely new instance that uh, we uh, have started working on, then in that case, uh, if you want to use financials, uh, uh, financials family applications, then you have to enable the financial offerings. Okay, we'll talk about it later, but uh, you know, just giving you an idea. So let's say for example, if for your organization under this particular instance, you want to use the procurement. Uh, related, uh, you know, applications and functions. So first of all, the supply chain related offerings have to be enabled, procurement related offerings have to be enabled. Similarly, if uh, from an HCM perspective, uh, some of the product family you want to utilize, then the offering has to be enabled. So once those are enabled, you will under the setup and maintenance afterwards, you will find this particular offerings. These are all the different offerings that have been enabled for this particular instance. Okay. like sales service student management supply chain planning workforce deployment okay if you scroll up okay you will see project marketing okay then you will even see financials here okay so these are all the different offerings that has been enabled for this particular demo environment okay and that's why it is available to you for the setup activities okay now for us what are we going to see or look at basically the financial offering okay so that's where you click on this particular drop down and you select the financials as an offering for you to work on okay once you select financial offering that is where you will see all the different functional area with respect to the financials okay that will be available to you for carrying out the setup activities okay 
So you can see these are called as the functional areas, the different functional areas are. So just as an example, payable is one of the functional area. Payment is one of the functional area. Expense is one of the functional area. Fixed assets is one of the functional area under financials, custom building, revenue recognition. Okay, similarly, uh, you know, intercompany. Okay, so these are all the different functional, we call it as the functional areas. Okay, basically applications or, uh, you know, functions you can say where uh, its related setups would be available. Okay, so first is the offering, the major categorization and uh, uh, the product family, you can say, and under that, the different products, we call it as the functional areas. Okay, different functional areas are available. Not all of things, things can be considered as a product itself. Rather, uh, it is more like a functions, okay, that can be enabled and, uh, you know, configured. Okay, the term does functions. Okay, so general ledger functions, payable related functions, payment related functions, cash management related functions. Then some of them are uh, common, uh, you know, common to the whole of the environment, not specifically for financials alone, but it is commonly applicable, uh, uh, functional areas that are commonly applicable for all the, uh, you know, different functions uh, uh, of the uh, SaaS application. Okay, like you can, can you see. show one? What is Sorry. there in here? Can you show one? At, uh, what is there in search? Yeah, yeah, I'll try to show. Uh, so yeah, like you can see here, some of the shared items, okay, like uh, common uh, uh, aspects across all the applications, like initial user related, uh, you know, activities or setups. Okay, so if I say all tasks, you will see user related uh, setup tasks. Now this particular uh, section or functional area is common, uh, commonly applicable for all. Okay, so management of uh, the users, okay, will be applicable equally for the HCM related uh, aspects, uh, equally related for financials, right? So that is why initial user as a section will be commonly, uh, the respective functional area and its setups will be commonly accessible for all offerings. Okay, the same way enterprise profile. So enterprise as a structure uh, definition, okay, uh, the geographical aspects and, uh, you know, the uh, enterprise definitions, things like that would be commonly applicable. Legal structures will be commonly applicable. Financial reporting structure is specifically for financial. So, you know, there are multiple components from, a, uh, you know, financial structure, uh, which, which is again a topic in itself. We'll talk through the concept of it and all later. Okay, but yeah, for carrying out all the financial reporting structure related setups, you will have to click on this particular functionality. If other general ledger uh, application related functions you want to access, not the functions, but typically the setup as okay. So that is where under when you click on general ledger functional area, you will see all the different setups that pertain to the general ledger application. This is all in a sequential order. Okay, Oracle has preset it in a sequential order uh, for all the different kind of setups. I'll go back. Setup and maintenance. Okay, so here we are under under financials itself. So these are for general ledger. The same way if you go to payables, you will see all the payable related activities. Now, primarily it will show you only the required activities. That means the mandatory activities, okay? Without which the application cannot work. But if you click on this drop down and expand it to all tasks, you will see all the different tasks that are applicable uh, for the payable module, which can be set up, okay? Depending upon the different features that are to be utilized. Okay, so that is where you will see all the different tasks with respect to each of the functional area. So you may have so, to you may have so, to uh, get familiar with all the uh, different terminologies that I'm using. Okay, like the functional area, the offering, the setup uh, tasks. Okay, like this, you may have to get familiar with it. So keep a note of things that I'm talking about and get, get yourself familiarized. But what is what can we do uh, going further in this? Thing. So you, we, you, are, you are going to do the setups. Okay. Uh, customizable? Is what? No, this is not customizable. This is like the standard Oracle setups which are available according to which, uh, you know, uh, depending upon the different uh, business structures that you have. Okay. Uh, you have to configure these elements. These are configurable elements so that you can use the or that particular organization for whom they, these modules are being implemented, can use the respective module. For example, we can modify it according to the client's requirement is what you're saying? 
Yeah, this is these are standard setups. Okay, these are standard setups, uh, setup areas you can say, and it has to be configured as per the business requirement. So let's say for example, payment terms. Okay, a particular business uh, is having a, a you know a different supplier. Whom, with whom they are dealing and with them. Let, let's say for example net 30 or uh, uh, you know uh, let's say uh, net 60 these are payment terms okay now if you need to use those payment terms within your uh, supplier invoicing process it has to be first configured okay every small aspect that you see on different application pages are supposed to be configured there is a configuration activity that goes behind it Okay, so that is what uh, this particular area is for those kind of configurations. So let's say, for example, uh, in this particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a particular in a journal entry, okay, you have to uh, enter the, uh, you know, select the category, okay, or let's say, for example, there is a code combination, accounting code combination that you have to enter on the journal entry. Now, how does that accounting code combination come up on that particular journal entry page? It is, there is a configuration activity that has gone behind it. Okay. Similarly, let's say, for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the journals have to be approved. So in a particular business environment uh, or for a particular business, there is a journal approval hierarchy that they follow. Okay. So that means so once the journal is approved, uh, it should go to, oh, sorry, once the journal is submitted for approval, it should go to, uh, let's say, uh, the the manager of the uh, particular uh, employee who has submitted the journal for approval. Okay, then it should go to the next level of the manager's manager. Then it should go to director level. Then it should go to CEO level. So how does system understand it? So basically, there is a specific set of configurational uh, uh, effort that has gone behind it. Okay, or some kind of configurations has been uh, uh, done within the uh, uh, for this particular environment. Okay, based on which the approval hierarchy flows. The same way, many elements that you see within the application, okay, almost everything, there is a setup activity or a configurational activity that has to be done. Okay, let's say for example, in a very in a very layman terms, when I speak, okay, let's say you are buying or purchasing an AC. Okay, you are installing that AC and that AC starts working. But then within that AC, uh, there are so many minute, uh, you know, parts, okay, that have been put together uh, for it to work as one single unit. The same way uh, for applications and software also, if a payable module has to be utilized by the uh, organization to, uh, you know, uh, to, to use it in its day-to-day uh, -day operations, okay, for booking of invoices, okay, for uh, uh, sending those invoices for approval, for booking of payments, there are many small, small, uh, small and may, uh, you know, major configurations that are to be in place. Okay. Every business does its activity differently. Okay. So accordingly, the respective configurations are to be made. So very typical example, let me say, there is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, you know, a Tata as an organization. Tata has different entities under it. Okay. Tata has different uh, operational facilities under it. Okay, so let's say Tata has 10 operational facilities and uh, 10 legal entities. Okay, so that has to be configured first. If let's say, for example, they decide to use Oracle ERP for carrying out their business functions. So first of all, all the 10 legal entities and their respective operational units and sites have to be created or configured within the application. When does that happen? When an implementation team goes to their uh, place, they understand their business requirement. So this is a business requirement, right? They have 10 legal entities and 10 operational facilities that needs to be config configured within the Oracle ERP so that they can carry out their business activities. Okay. So that is where this, that is a configurational element. Okay. Similarly, Mahindra, uh, if Mahindra is using the Oracle ERP, for them, it might be a different structure. Like uh, they may have 20 legal entities. They may have 20 operational sites. Okay. So accordingly, the configuration has to be done. Okay, similarly, uh, you know, for different businesses, different uh, aspects would be applicable and accordingly, the respective setups have to be done. Okay, so there are certain predefined setups or configurational tasks, as we call it, will be available, which are required to be configured for the application to function. And those configurations have to be done in line with the business requirement.
Okay, so when we are doing the setups uh, with respect to generalizer application, with respect to payable module, we will take into consideration uh, a sample, uh, you know, business uh, structure. And in line with that, we will do the different kinds of setups. Okay, Hopes, hope I've been able to, uh, you know, clarify to at least to some extent. Uh, one question. Uh, if yeah. I have two suppliers, okay, the payment terms of two suppliers are different. Right. So uh, can I uh, configure two different, uh, you know, configurations for uh, each of them and it works perfectly for uh, okay. both of them? Yes. So Simultaneously. Payment, yeah. So how it works. So, uh, you know, you can have thousands of suppliers, right? Now, thousands of suppliers, there may be some payment terms that are common, right? So let's say, for example, net 30 is a common uh, uh, payment terms for, let's say, a uh, hundred of your suppliers. Net 60 is a pay common payment term for, uh, let's say, another uh, 40 or 50 of them. So now these are commonly to be used. So therefore, now in the application, you will create, uh, let's say, two of the payment uh, terms. One is net 30, one is net 60. Okay. And then you will assign these uh, payment terms to the respective supplier profiles. Okay. So that is how payment terms are to be defined. So payment term, first of all, if you want to assign it to a respective uh, supplier profiles, wherever it is applicable. Okay. Uh, then in that case, first of all, it has to be defined within the application. Only then you can use it. And this defining uh, with the uh, application, whatever it is, uh, needs to have permissions, right? Probably yeah, so, the junior most member will not have it. The person above will have it. Something yeah, so the, those are access related uh, aspects. So, okay. you know, access, okay. access uh, restrictions, uh, which is more or less related to the, uh, you know, security management. Uh, that is uh, part of it. Okay, but here we are saying that we are defining it as a, uh, you know, configurational element for the whole of this environment or this instance. Okay. So within this instance, we have to, uh, you know, configure it first of all. Access related aspects comes later. Who should get access to what? Okay, that is a, a second aspect. Okay, but before that, the respective set, the respective component needs to be there within the, uh, uh, you know, uh, configurational element. Otherwise, uh, you will not be able to provide the access, right? So that's how, uh, you know, uh, it is. So first of all, the configurations, first of all, all the, Configurations need to be in place with respect to all the different kinds of elements that are applicable for the, uh, you know, business to function its operations or for even for the application to function. Okay. So all those setups have to be completed first. Okay. And then the access related aspects are assigned. So that's why the course has been designed in such a way. First, you will be looking at the configurations. What are the different configurations that are required? Okay, for the particular application to work in line with the business ex example, I will be explaining it. And then we will configure that. And then later on, we will provide the access or we will talk about the access related aspects. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So gradually you will understand all of these uh, things. You know, these are all different, uh, you know, setups. Some of them are mandatory setups. Some of them are, uh, you know, optional setups, uh, which has to be, uh, you know, uh, the, the configurations have to be done accordingly so that the application works, okay, as expected. Okay, so that is where the different concepts or different configurations have to be done. And this is the area where you do the different kinds of uh, configurations for different kinds of applications. There is a predefined list of setup tasks, which allows you to do that particular configuration and accordingly, you will define those configurations. Okay. So for payables, you can see these are all the different kinds of setups, uh, setup tasks, which are, uh, which can be configured. Okay. Now, some of them are required. Like I mentioned, if you go to the required task, you will see payment terms, procurement agents, common options for payable and procurement, invoice option and payment option. These are mandatory setups that needs to be done. Okay. If you want, if your organization wants to use the payables uh, application, okay, in line with their requirement, okay, these, uh, you know, these setups have to be 
completed if at all they want to use the accounts payable module. Okay. So similar to that, it is applicable for all the different modules. For payments also, it is applicable. Okay. If you want to use the payments module, then these are some of the uh, tasks, setup tasks that have to be completed so that the, uh, you know, uh, application becomes usable. Okay. And you can carry out, uh, the business can carry out its day-to-day -day activities. Okay. So uh, similarly, uh, you know, for cash management, for different other modules. These are all different uh, functional areas with respect to the different modules in under which you will have a, a specific set of tasks that needs to be configured as per the business requirement. Okay, so there are specific spaces. It's not like, uh, you know, so, something out of the blue uh, business says and you can uh, include it over here. It's not like that. Okay, so when you say customizable, you need to understand that uh, we do not customize it uh, by bringing anything from outside. Okay, from outside in the sense you do not, uh, you cannot add a, a, you know, field of your choice in here. Okay, there are specific set of uh, fields that need to be filled up, okay, in order to complete that particular configuration. So let's say, for example, manage banks. Okay, this is the bank master for the organization, uh, which has to be created over here. Okay, the bank setups as we call it. So first of all, under this particular task like manage banks, okay, you will have to create all the different banks uh, with which the business is dealing. So this is the bank master. Okay, so let's say for example, uh, here you see all these banks have been created, okay, which will be utilized uh, in in uh, the processes that the business carried out carries out in the payment processes or uh, you know uh, in the payable module or similarly in case of employee expenses for the employee bank accounts to be created, this information would be required. This bank information would be, would be required. Okay, similarly, let's say for example, uh, uh, for customer, uh, you know, recording the customer uh, payments. Okay, from, from which uh, which customer has given from which bank. Okay, now again, their, their bank information comes up, right? So that is where this bank master, the bank names will be utilized. Okay, so first of all, this configuration needs to be in place. The different kinds of bank accounts, not bank accounts, rather banks. Okay, the different kinds of banks with which, uh, uh, you know, which you need to record as a data element for your transactions. So first of all, it has to be created over here. Okay, only then it will be available in the respective areas for use. Okay, so if you see here, if I click on add, it will give me the standard Oracle uh, fields. Okay, which Oracle has, uh, on, uh, you know, Oracle has coded, okay, for creation or for creation of the bank information. So like for, for entering a bank information, the respective country uh, has to be associated where the bank is present. Okay, similarly, the bank name is required, whether it is HDFC, how would you know whether it is HDFC or, uh, you know, uh, IDBI or things like that? So basically, a bank name has to be provided. Okay. Then the respective bank code. Okay. Like the bank, there is a unique code to each bank. Right. That information has to be provided. Okay. So these are all bank related configuration that we are talking about. Okay. Only once the bank is configured, then only you can configure the bank branch related information. And only once the bank branch is uh, configured, then you will be able to configure the required bank accounts that are used by the business for its day-to-day -day activities. So you have to understand which all banks are. So when you gather the requirement, you take all these data elements from the business. To, you will ask them, okay, provide us with the list of all the banks that you have uh, currently. Okay, bank branches that you have currently, or where you are dealing with. Similarly, the, the bank accounts that you are dealing with. Give us that information. Okay, and there is a specific format or a template that you have to follow. Basically, nothing but the, uh, you know, uh, respective uh, fields which Oracle needs to be filled in. Okay, so accordingly, the data is taken, you configure it, and then it becomes available for the business to use in its day-to-day -day operations. So only once you create a bank, bank branch and bank account in this particular setup, you will have you, the accounts payable team who is doing the day-to-day -day business operations will be able to find that bank account information and select it for payment processes. Okay, so that is the kind of configurational uh, activities uh, or configurational efforts that go behind all, will this uh, be, you know. Will this be visible to the customer? Which customer? Yes, this is a setup Sub area. So, 
yeah okay. so this is this setup area that's what i mentioned if uh, you know this will be visible to the customer that is our customer right uh, for whom we are implementing supply oh okay 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 so the organization who has basically the license to this will have access to everything it is not something that will be accessible for outside parties okay so uh, so let's say for example tata as i mentioned right tata as an organization they are procuring the licenses for oracle erp so what they will get is a similar kind of url they will get tata will get it okay tata as an organization will get it once they buy the license and then there will be a user id and password that will be allotted to them and then the team that is implementing uh, the oracle erp for them will get access from uh, you know which which tata as an organization the it team itself will grant the access or their own respective it team will have access to this all these areas where they will uh, do the setups and make it usable for the day to day operations of the tata uh, business entities okay so direct directly the accounts payable team cannot uh, jump into this uh, erp and you know start booking of invoices or start doing the payments because this is not usable this particular instance is not usable until it is properly configured the same way like i, I mentioned like ac ac you will not be able to use it until the engineers have uh, you know configured it configured in the sense uh, properly put all the parts together and you know make made it as a final product did the testing okay unit testing and all until that is done and until it becomes a finished product you cannot use ac you cannot call it even an ac right so the same way you have to understand from an or software perspective also so business is the one who is the end user for all the applications to where they carry out their day to day activities accounts payable as a team they carry out their day to day activities in the accounts payable module okay similarly the general accounting department carry out their uh, activities of general accounting uh, activities within the general accounting module now if they want to use it first of all someone has to go in and configure it which is generally done by the it team okay similarly like your outlook okay if you need to use your uh, email outlook in your organization first of all someone from the it team has to uh, create an access for you okay similarly configure your mailbox okay things like that the same way if an organization has to use the applications oracle erp applications okay with the different uh, uh, you know areas of work first of all there is a configuration that goes behind it okay it has to be made usable first of all in line with the business uh, setup or the business requirements okay that is what we do as a functional consultant as a functional consultant once you are trained for uh, trained on these activities how these setups are done and all those things you become eligible to be part of that team that configures the applications for the business who has procured the license okay you you do the implementation you configure it after knowing their requirement after knowing their uh, business structure and all you make it uh, you know uh, you enable these products or enable these uh, applications configure it and make it available for their use on their instance which they have purchased the licenses for okay this is just a common instance this is a testing instance a test environment you can consider of it as a uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, uh, what what do we call it uh, a pilot uh, for pilot testing we use certain products right so you can uh, think of it that way so this is just a test environment where you as a person can feel, uh, you can access and do the practice of it this is not something that will be used by organizations for organizations they will have their own uh you are they will have their own uh you know accesses and password secured for them based on the licenses that they purchase okay this is more like a demo product for people to learn or explore and things like that okay hope that's made that makes sense all right so this was uh, you know some of the setup aspects of uh, the pages that uh, where you navigate from a setup perspective that i have explained for your understanding you will understand it more in detail as and when we progress through the uh, you know uh, through the course okay with respect to each of the application what are the different mandatory 
setups that are to be done. Okay, so that uh, the application becomes usable for the organization. Okay, for whomsoever you are configuring it. That we will understand. Now going back to the home page. A little so confusing, but definitely on. yes, please. Uh for the first time setup uh, that irrespective of the, all the modules, it will be available for the organization, right? For that one, the step-by-step -step of that requirements, like a uh, few of the function, it is not required for the specific organizations. So yes. we can eliminate on that one and we can add on that one like that one. We do have a super access for the admins only or end users also we can give as an uh, with that uh, provisions to make enable or disable like that. No, no, no. So that's where I mentioned, I told you, right? Uh, in any particular business environment, there is an IT team. Okay, why do we have an IT team? So that, you know, they can manage the different softwares and applications. Okay, so IT team, generally IT team or the functional team, okay, uh, will be given the setup and maintenance access. Normal business users that are working in different departments, they will never be given this access. They will not even see the setup and maintenance. Okay, but they will only or they will only have access to the respective modules on which they need to work. Okay, and one more thing in the offshore team and so in the back end support, we used to have like a test environment before moving out right. into the productions like that. Right. So in the similar uh, similar way, we can do it in the uh, cloud also. In that way. Uh, similar concept applies to all all industries wherever any kind of software is used okay, okay. Uh, on all those cases this is the same concept or logic applicable so uh, any organization that buys licenses for oracle saas saas software as a service uh, applications they will get generally uh, you know uh, two or maybe one test environment and one production or if they need more they will give get two two environments and uh, you know, one production environment. Okay. So production environment, what is production environment? It is kind of the main environment on which the business unit, business uh, users, they carry out their day-to-day -day activities. Okay. So that is a live environment as we call it. Okay. And then there is a shadow environment as we call it as the test environment or the development environment, which is basically utilized by uh, the IT team in case the business users face any issues on the live environment, then uh, there needs to they cannot do any kind of testing on the live environment, right? That is where there is a shadow environment, which we call it as the test environment that will be available, okay? Uh, which Oracle gives licenses to for that also, okay? Where they can test out, you know, and see, try to identify what could be the probable issue, and then uh, you know, uh, take the corrective action. Once they are they are thorough with the corrective action that needs to be taken. Then they apply that on the live environment. That's how it works. So that will also be part of our role, or it will be a from the developer role. So functional, if you are a functional consultant, definitely that will also be uh, avail available to you as well, because functional consultants are supposed to uh, support the business. Okay, so functional consultant are uh, again kind of a back end uh, support role only. You can say backend role uh, where you know they they configure all the do the all the configurations and support the business uh, you know in case they face any issues or uh, in case they have any uh, you know they need to know how a particular new feature functions okay for all those support related activities it is the functional team that come into picture for which you are training sir uh, in this training duration uh, you will be taking any of the like live projects of uh, initial setups and other stuff like that so it's it's not more like a, a live project or something, but it is real life examples that I will be taking you through. With. Okay, so basically, you know, you will first of all I'll tell you. Okay, let's assume that we are Tata as a company. Okay, and then in line with that, we will do the respective configurations. Okay. Okay. okay so in that way, we will proceed further. Okay. So taking into consideration the live examples, okay, live example in the sense, we will assume that, okay, let's assume that we are a particular organization, okay, for which, for whom the application needs to be installed. Now, in line with that, what are the different installation uh, or you know, configuration components 
that needs to be done uh, you know considering a particular uh, assuming a particular uh, you know common requirement okay so in that order we will proceed further with the respective setups and things okay so there is a lot of things to understand so right now i am just uh, giving you a brief of or to give you a flavor of how it would look like i'm just taking you through with the navigational components your question is very valid okay uh, you know you may not be able to relate at this point of time when I'm, when i'm saying these things that's why i'm saying like you know i'm giving you just a, a, a hint of how it would look like moving forward so we will take uh, we will assume uh, you know we are going to do the implementation for a particular organization and in line with that organization uh, uh, name and things like that we will assume it and then in line with that we will do the configuration we will, we will assume that okay the business that particular organization there are these many legal entities okay there are these many uh, uh, you know operational sites for which the configuration has to be done then we will move on to the sub components okay for those particular legal entity okay one of the legal entity uh, this is the configuration element uh, accounts payable has to be enabled then in accounts payable what all are the different components that need to be configured so that it becomes usable for that particular entity okay so like that in that particular flow we will go in the coming sessions okay okay uh, so now again, from a con uh, navigational component perspective, uh, from a business user side, okay, this was the setup and maintenance that we looked at, the navigation of it, uh, which is required for what, which is required for the functional consultants uh, or backend support team, okay, or the IT team, uh, basically who uh, does enable uh, any certain functionality or you know any feature or has to configure something, okay, or give access for all of those cases. The setup and maintenance as a navigation would be available for them and they will have to uh, go through that or navigate through that particular page okay but as an end user as a business user when business has to carry out its uh, transactional activities okay for them generally uh, you know they will go to the navigator and in within the navigator this is called as a navigator okay that a navigator will, will give you uh, the complete list of the application that that particular user has access to Okay, in the sequential order. Okay, and they can go to that respective area and uh, select and do the activities. Okay, so just like you can, uh, uh, you know, relate it to your banking app. Okay, so once you log into the banking app, okay, you will have on the left hand side a particular menu kind of option where you will find different kind of menu. Okay, like let's say for example, bank transfers, loan request. Okay, uh, things like that, right? So this is, is uh, more or less the same way. So this is an application again where there is a menu icon available and on the left hand side, uh, the user who is uh, logged into this particular user ID will be able to see all the different uh, you know functions and application accesses uh, that he needs to work on. Okay, and accordingly he can go to that respective area and carry out his work. So let's say for example, he is an accountant that is, uh, you know, that needs to work on receivables and payables both. So depending upon the access that I has provided to him, the, he will find it. He can click on it and then go to the respective work area. So I have clicked on receivables and then clicked on accounts receivable. So the accounts receivable work area has opened and then he can carry out all the related activities there. Okay. The same way if, uh, let's say, if he has to now work on the payable related uh, process or payable invoice booking, then he can go to this uh, navigator and under his, uh, you know, uh, you know, list, uh, you will, he will be able to find payables and then he can select the respective work area. Right now, the access of billing uh, invoice booking area is not there because the access has not been provided to this user. But let's say the access has been provided, then he'll be able to see the invoice related uh, work area. Uh, and similarly payment related work area and he can click on it and uh, go down further below and uh, do the required uh, you know activities transactional activities of invoice booking or payments for the particular uh, business okay so that's how that's the use of this particular navigator so for end users navigator is the place where they can go to and find the different uh, workspaces according to the accesses that have been granted to them Okay, in order to carry out their business activities and their business duties. 
with respect to the function that they are part of. Function means the business function that they are part of. Whether they are part of the payable functions, payable process of the business, or whether they are part of the receivable or cash management or treasury or asset uh, management department. So accordingly, the respective application accesses will be available and the respective uh, work areas will be available where they can go and carry out their day-to-day uh, -day activities, transactional activities. So this is called as a navigator event. This one. Okay. Going back to the home page. So this is in detail around the uh, you know navigational components, preliminary navigational components for you to uh, you know able to relate and uh, get familiarized. Okay. All right. Uh, so I would be you know wrapping up for today. So anyone uh, you know from tomorrow onwards, uh, the access uh, will be restricted. So I request uh, all those who are interested to move further with this course, please confirm your enrollments. This is quite interesting in a way that, you know, you are going to uh, enter a, a whole to, uh, altogether new area itself. Okay. So things right now, until now, you might not have envisioned it in such a way. Okay. Like, okay, you are using a particular software on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you are able to see or perform certain activities and things like that. But then uh, there is, there is some activity that has gone behind it okay which is the configurational activity for that particular application to look like that or you know for that application to show you that different kind of functions that you can perform there is actually a configurational effort that has gone gone behind uh to entirely set up that particular software for your use okay so that is where uh it is completely a new horizon uh a new thought process that you will have to uh, you know, you will come across, okay, once we start with this particular, or we, once we again further move, do, move down through the uh, course and, uh, you know, learn new things. Yeah, a bit challenging, a challenging in a way that it is an entirely, uh, probably a new area for you, okay, and initially you may find it a little bit difficult to understand uh, in a way, right, uh, you know, for you to relate because you've never been part of that process, but, uh, you know, gradually you will get a knack of it and you will understand you know what are the different configurations that are to be done uh, in order to uh, get the application uh, in a way how a business can utilize it okay for carrying out their day to day activities okay so confirm your enrollments today and uh, you will be given the access to a new link uh, you know for joining the sessions from tomorrow onwards and uh, you know uh, uh, even the respective uh, uh, WhatsApp group and uh, uh, Triotech uh, website for uh, gaining access to the, these recording. Everything will be granted uh, once you complete your enrollments today. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can ask. So there's I, some I, question I, from uh, someone. Yeah. In the initial setup, is there any if in the case of that organization is already using some other ERPs, they want to migrate it for Oracle Cloud Financials. So at that point in time, that integration steps will also be teached in this uh, module or more. So it is not something that uh, gets directly integrated. It's altogether a new implementation that you are talking about. Okay, so it's not like uh, from that particular environment from that. Uh, other ERP, all things will get uh, sucked up into uh, uh, Oracle ERP. That doesn't happen that way. So uh, if a business decides to use Oracle ERP, okay, and uh, switch from their old ERP, so first of all, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Oracle ERP will have to be configured according to the business requirement. There is a process of implementation that, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, uh, that the organization goes through an implementation project phase it goes through where the oracle uh, you know erp uh, configuration team okay will understand the functional consultants which you will be part of okay you will understand the uh, you know the oracle team uh, configuration team will understand uh, all the business uh, uh, you know processes uh, you know all the different uh, components of the business with respect to each of the functions like finance as a function its supply chain hcm as a function they will understand they will configure the application entirely from scratch. 
Okay. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not like from the other ERP or automatically everything will get uh, pulled into Oracle ERP and uh, things will start working. It doesn't happen that way. Okay. Okay. Sir. So that is where you will understand in this course how you can implement it, implement the Oracle ERP. Once our organization has purchased the license for Oracle ERP, you discuss out the requirements with them. You try to understand their business with respect to the different functions of the business, and then you configure them. So from a general, uh, you know, business uh, requirement perspective, we will take example and we will proceed further with the configuration. Okay. Any other questions? The classes will be like daily eight to nine? Or it yes, it will be eight to nine daily. Eight to nine is the time, but uh, definitely as we can see, today it got stretched a bit, right? Uh, because there were questions and things like that. So. Definitely it may go up till 9.15 or so, sometimes a bit more till 9.30, let's say, maximum. I will not go beyond that, uh, depending upon the different uh, kinds of questions and uh, discussions that would happen. Because if it okay. delays, then it's um, it's a problem for working. Yeah, I will I will try to wrap up maximum by 9.15. That's, that's what I'll take care of. Okay, okay because I mean... uh, one hour at least I would need for doing the training uh the the topics that i would want to cover uh and maybe 15 minutes of time to discuss any questions you may have or clarity that you may need okay so uh that's where i will keep it uh i will not be uh you know uh taking up any questions during the session that is at the time of uh the one hour slot and after which uh, during that you may you know uh, note down your questions or queries that you may have and then uh during the 15 uh, minute uh uh, you know, slot, uh, we may discuss out your queries or your questions. And after that, even, uh, uh, you know, on uh, WhatsApp, I will be available. If you have any questions, you may drop in. And uh, then later on, I'll come back to you with the reply for that as well. So total course duration is uh, three months or four months? No, it is 90 hours, 80 to 90 hours of uh, course duration. Which may which will be roughly right like three months roughly, okay. So yeah, so that is how uh, the course offering is. Ninety hours of live sessions, eighty to ninety. Any questions? Uh, one question, uh, you can provide standard operating uh, process for each uh, module, like short, uh, short book, uh, short, uh, you know, so we can go through it. Yeah, so that is where, uh, you know, the course curriculum is there. Okay, so the course curriculum, uh, which I had, uh, uh, you know, shown you yesterday. Okay, like what all will be covered with, uh, you know, as part of uh, uh, this course that will be provided to you, which has details mm -hmm. of uh, what are the configuration setups that uh, we have to access. And, you know, uh, then you need to go inside and do the configuration. So for that, any other additional material is not there, but uh, the basic uh, setup related uh, activity names and things like that would be available in that curriculum document. And then you have to follow the daily recordings. Because okay. if you do not follow the daily recordings, anyways, you will not be able to understand. Okay, thank you. Yeah, recordings will that is the reason recordings are available, and it's not like just by attending uh, the live session you will understand everything. Okay, because I, I understand for many of you it will be a, a altogether a new area, so that is where you will have to put in efforts to uh, go through the recordings in your spare time as well, at least a couple of times. That is when you will be you know, you will start to understand the concepts uh, more, you will start to relate with the concepts more. Okay, so just uh, attending one hour of session is not enough. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions? Uh, just one quick question. Nothing to do with this course. 
Yeah. Uh, which ERP solutions um, is better, like um, Microsoft or Adobe? Uh, it's all are competitive. So Microsoft Dynamics is also equally good. Uh, Oracle is also equally good. SAP is also equally good. Now it depends, uh, you know, different businesses, they would go for uh, different ERP depending upon uh, what their comfort zone is with respect to the license fees is, uh, you know, service uh, uh, agreements, uh, servicing, uh, service related, maintenance related uh, activities, things like that. So based on the comfort zone of different, uh, you know, clients, they will move in. Some uh, clients may not uh, like some of the features or applications of Oracle. Therefore, they may want to, you know, go with uh, SAP. Okay, so different uh, or, uh, ERPs have different capabilities. Uh, majority of them aim at uh, uh, targeting the core business processes, but then some additional features and the functionalities would be there that will differ from ERP to ERP. So the market leaders are SAP, Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, and a couple of uh, more, but then there are many niche players as well that specifically target to core uh, some of the core business processes. Maybe they'll just target for, uh, they have applications specifically for, uh, uh, you know, sales related uh, processes. They are market leaders in that. Okay, so maybe Oracle's uh, functionalities or features related to the sales or CRM module may not be that flexible uh, to cater to specific uh, industry requirement. Okay, so that is where they will go for uh, that specific uh, ERP for that specific uh, you know, uh, function business process. Okay, so depends. But for the core business processes, uh, ERPs like SAP, Oracle, and uh, Dynamics uh, are the market leaders. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Before we wrap up. Okay. Uh, if no questions, then uh, hope uh, you have received the form, Google Forms. For those who have not enrolled, uh, you may fill in. Uh, and even uh, you can reach out if you want further information, you want anything additional, you may reach, in, uh, reach out to that particular number that is... Uh, put up in the chat and uh, you may, you know, get your queries clarified. Okay. All right, then uh, that's it guys. Thank you. Have a good day and uh, we'll meet tomorrow uh, uh, and, uh, you know, proceed further with the other training topics. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.